Father, we come together this morning. And Lord, we thank you for what you've done for each and every one of us. And Father, as we watch these two be baptized this morning, knowing and understanding that baptism does not save someone, that Father, they've already been saved because they have captured you in Lord and in the heart. But Father, this is, this is their confession, this is their time, <coughs> this is symbolic of their life. And Father, it is our duty as Christians to teach, to help, to do all that we can. I thank you, Father, for each one that's here this morning. And I pray if there's someone here this morning that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that already that their hearts have been touched. And the Father, they will realize, and they realize that they do need you in their lives. As we look at what's going on in the world today, Father, I believe in my heart that the end of time is coming because of what's going on, what's happening over in Egypt, and all the other lands over there. Knowing, Father, knowing that one day, one day our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is coming back. And the Father, we're going to go to be with Him. Father, I pray that each person here realizes that. I pray that each person open up their heart. I pray, Father, there's someone here that is already saved, but maybe not truly a member of the church. But Father, our doors are open, and we welcome all. Speak to each and every one. I do, Father. Take charge of your service this day. Lead us, guide us, direct us. In thy son's precious name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Again, we do welcome everyone. It's good to see all who are here with us. In the way of announcements, be aware of things that are going on and will be taking place as well here. Uh, next Sunday, we'll have a banquet called the Going Away Banquet for Jason and for Wendy. Uh, and they will be, and Jason and Wendy will be going to California the second week in September. Somewhere around there. The ninth day. So basically, the second week uh, of September, they'll be officially be going. So we, next Sunday, we'll have a going, uh, going Away Banquet. All would like to come. Um, you can attend, it would be good towards having it. Uh, our business meeting would normally would have been next Sunday. We're going to have postponed the following Sunday, the 1st of September. And we'll have the business meeting uh, the following Sunday after the morning worship as well. The second, which is um, that Monday, uh, first Monday in September, is Labor Day. And so there is no school here at St. Anthony Parish for that day, so keep that in mind. So these things are going on and are taking place here. Any other announcements or anything else we need to be aware of, of activities or things going on? If not, Mr. Al, coming leaders, do nothing. M number two, holy, holy, holy. <laughs>
pray for them and remember them in prayer. As Alan mentioned in his prayer, remember the different things that are going on throughout the land. Not only here in the U.S., but also abroad. Many things, many things are happening and taking place. Pray for the many, even now as we speak, that are been inundated by uh, rain, and flash floods, and flooding as it was in this recent part of the U.S. this morning. Uh, there have been many places where every now was taking place and people are dealing with that. So pray for them and remember these many, many people that are dealing with that. Prayer requests, concerns, or things you would like to share with us this morning. Ginger. I think we pray for my family. Yes. Mae's really in bad shape. The Lord says she's suffering so much and we just don't know what to do anymore. So remember her especially and the long time and long time to our parents. Really good for us. Okay. So remember folks, all, remember all your sisters pray. May has shingles for those who don't know. So she's suffering from shingles. The long or she just suffering from different things, right? Yes. Women they keep playing the glory, of course, as we all know, she's suffering from all time, so remember her prayer. And then Dolores, he's still suffering with her knee. So she's and the rest of it I have. So. And then everything else is in <laughs> So all the systems basically they have different things that are going on. So just remember all of them in prayer, we should sure. Other prayer requests. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are they doing okay? Because I know that when Mindy told us last week, and they, I know they got, it was in a hall of an accident, and they weren't severely hurt, but I know they were hurt to the extent.
pray. Almighty God, we come before you again. We thank you for all of your blessings. Thank you for all that you've given to us. And Lord, just thanks for being with us. We come now, Lord, and we give you back a portion of what you have blessed us with. We ask, Lord, that you'll see to it that all that is collected is used in the furtherance of your kingdom for the spreading of the gospel. May we use what you give to us wisely and under your leadership and under your guidance. And Lord, may you bless both the gift and the giver in the name of Jesus. He reveals to us 
what we are to do. First of all, if you notice in verses 5 to 9, first thing you need to do is put off the old self. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires and greed, which is idolatry. Now because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways, in the life you once lived. But how, but now you must rid yourself of all such things as these, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices. These are some hard things. Many of us have lived these things a long time before we came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. It's hard to put off some of these old things. Anger and wrath, they're destructive. It causes harm. It does not promote love. Malice. What does malice do? It harbors old grudges. Blasphemy grieves the Holy Spirit. Filthy language stains our public testimony. Lies make us unlike Jesus. And the truth is not in us. So you see, these things have devastating effect upon us now as believers. These are how we used to do. These things are the attitudes of darkness, of past life. These are what we used to do and should no longer want to do. They should be discarded every day, every morning, before you leave the house, or even while you're in the house. We're to put these things throw them away. It says, get rid of it. Put it to death. You know what happens when you put something to death? You bury it. <clears throat> we have a funeral. And this is a good thing with this. Because these things we should not have in our lives any longer. But sometimes people will put them to death and then they go in the back door and they dig them up. <clears throat> They take them out, they shake things off, and they put them back on again. And he said, put them to death. They get rid of them. These can cause more harm than anything else in our lives now. Because this is not who we are, but to remind us of what we were before Christ came into our hearts and our lives. These things, as he so says, we must get rid of. This week we had a couple of people, like Miss Sonia, and others I've heard of people having gallbladder problems and they've had to have gallbladder removal. Well, let's just say you that wasn't that was you've had this gallbladder problem. Well, let's say you have an appendix problem and you do nothing about it. Either one. What happens? And it destroys you. It will literally kill you. If nothing is taken, nothing happens. It causes great pain beforehand as well. Both causes great pain. Well, the same thing with this, the old self. These things now, since you become a believer, will cause you great pain. They will cause destruction. They will cause great harm. If nothing is done, these things will kill and they will make life miserable. Just like maybe some of the physical ailments you had before surgery corrected it. It made things really, really miserable. Now, if you notice in here, and what he's talking about, and understand, he's talking to believers. Now, I'm talking to people who are outside the church, he's talking to believers, to holy and faithful brothers in Christ. What does holy and faithful mean? That means separated. That doesn't mean you're better than anybody else. That means you're separated. That means you are now a person belonging to the Lord. And so what happens here is he's talking to believers, and again, if you notice in verse 8, 
he says in here, but rid yourself of all such things. It's your responsibility to get rid of these things, to do away with it. And you're able to do it in the power of the Lord because now the Lord lives in you. So he wants you to take off these old things and get rid of them. In Matthew chapter 5, and in verse 29 and 30, here Jesus says he spoke to the people on the mountain. He talked to them concerning what is to be done. In here, he says, If your right eye causes you to sin, what you to do? Gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than your whole body to be torn to hell. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off, throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than the whole body into hell. Now, understand, he's not talking about literal surgery here. A lot of people get this, they misinterpret this. He's talking about dealing with the sin in your life and getting rid of it. He's not telling you, okay, if your right hand is calling you to sin, go ahead and chop it off. No, because then what happens is you use your left hand to sin. And then maybe even then you'll, you'll chop off that part of it, and then you'll try to then you'll do something else, and it'll still cause you to sin. So he's not talking about literal surgery. He's saying that the believer, the person truly believing in Christ, needs to get rid of these things in their lives. These things that cause them to sin, whatever it may be, whatever may be taking place here. As he says in here, in Colossians chapter 3, put it to death. Therefore, whatever belongs to the earthly nature, whatever it is, he says, now, what happens? Because of these things, God's wrath is coming. You see, you can continue to do these things, but then you'll suffer the consequences from God. And God will justly deal with you. Just as he says in Hebrews, I will punish you. I will take care of you. I will discipline you. Why? Because you belong to him. But here, he relates to the people who are believers in the Lord. Get rid of these things. Get dressed for the day, spiritually. And this is how we are to do it. Take off those things that is not needed. Throw away those things that should not be done in our lives. Get dressed properly, spiritually. The second thing that needs to be done here is not only put off on the old self, but if you notice in verses 10, 10 through 13, the second thing he says is that we are to put on the new self. And this is important for us. Put on the new self. As we take off the old stuff, he says, now, and having put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge and the image of its creator, there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slaves, free, but Christ is all and is it all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and beautiful, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with each other and forgetting whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. That's a lot. That's a whole bunch. Putting on a new self. See, we are to be dressed in the power and the image of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We don't always do that. We always make excuses. But we can strive to be like that of Christ Jesus. To put on a new self. We are, well, who are we? When we say, I am a believer in Jesus Christ. When we say, I believe in Jesus Christ, mother, what do we say? We are God's chosen people. We are people belonging to God. This is the new self now. I am no longer the person I used to be. But now in Christ Jesus, I am new. Now, don't make any excuses like we all do and say, yeah, but I'm not perfect. That's true. We're not perfect. But don't lean upon that and don't believe the devil will lie and say, I'm not perfect, so it's okay if I do these things. No. We should strive 
to do these things under the new self. And we can do it in his power and his might. It can be done. It is possible. Let us act like God's people and not like the people of the world. Let us set the examples that we need to set, even if nobody else is doing it. Even if you feel like Elijah, and you may feel like you're the only one that's doing what is right, then continue to do what is right. Continue walking with the Lord. Remember the, the warning or the advice that Moses gave to the people of Israel. It's still applicable today. As he told them in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 6, he said, Observe the commands of the Lord your God and walking in his ways and revering him. And he even went on to say, When you eat and you are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. I will tell you this. Remember the things of God and what he has done and is doing in our lives. Remember his deeds that we are living for. And as he is the reason we have this new life that we have. Is it going to be easy to do these things? No. It's going to be very difficult. It's going to be very hard. You're going to have many people against you. The evil forces of the world are going to be against you. You're going to have other people that are going to be against you. It's never going to be easy. But it can be done. Remember, what did Jesus do? Who did Jesus say we are now that we are believers? And here is, as we're talking to believers, he says that we are the salt of the earth. He said that we are the light of the world and that we need to demonstrate that light. For what reason? To give glory and honor to God. To show others, I am a person belonging to God. Sometimes I feel awfully miserable. God still loves. And he still cares. And he still admits his grace and mercy. Jesus said, let your light shine. And man may see and know that God still lives. Meekness overcomes pride and arrogance. Humility makes us like Jesus. We need to daily humble ourselves under God's mighty hand. Mercy and kindness, that demonstrates grace, God's grace. Remember the grace that God bestowed upon you when you first came to him, a sinner as you were. He administered grace. Patience, patience shows consideration for others. And then forgiveness. Forgiveness breaks down the barriers all the barriers in the world. Forgiving one another as God so forgave you. Having a new self enables us and others to see Jesus Christ in us. Isn't that why we as believers live from day to day? Is it not to give glory and honor to God? Is it not to show others that indeed Christ does live in us. But why should we do these new things? Why? Because we are God's children of people. Because He has bestowed grace upon me. Because Jesus loved me so much that He died on the cross of my sins. Because God in His mercy forgave me even when I didn't deserve it. He didn't treat me as my sins so deserve. Even today, He does not treat me as my sins so deserve. Even today, we are blessed. God still blesses. Get dressed for today. Put on the things of God. Put on these things. Don't be like the world, but be like God's chosen people and what God would have you and I do putting on the new self daily and 
then the third thing is putting on the most important element of all. Love. The love of God. That's far more important. Here in verse 14, as he says, and over all of these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. You know why there's no unity in the world and the home? They may have love one for another. They don't have a copy of love. Unconditional love. Love that looks beyond our faults and the many things. What, what, what a world it would be if we would all just overlook and say, you know, I love you in spite of it. The first year around, yes, I love you in spite of that too as well. But we love each other. Too proud of love. 1 Corinthians, I'm sure we're all familiar with 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of men and angels, yet I have not love, what happens? I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have even the gift of prophecy, and I can fathom all mysteries and knowledges, and if I have faith that can move out, but yet I have not love, I'm not. Him. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. And of these three remain faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And this is so true. Godly love is the bond, is the bond that holds everything together. Everything. The family, the home, the husband, the wife, even the different races. If you notice in verse 11, there is no barriers here. There's no distinction. You get to heaven, guess what? There are no Jews. There are no Gentiles. There is no white, no black, no red, no green, no whatever color. It's all Jews in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no barriers. Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, he broke down those barriers. You know what the problem is today in the world? It's barriers. Even in Christianity, I see it. It's like, wow. Don't you know? Jesus broke down all the barriers. There's nothing there. And the reason is, is that people are not looking to God they love. To their own selves and their own way of thinking. And we need to get rid of all of that. Love produces, God's love now, produces unity among believers as it so says here. Again, why is there much, so much strife? Why is there so much chaos? I can copy love. Copy love. They say they have it, but do they demonstrate it? Do they show it? These Christ-like qualities, when you steal it, can make an impact on you, your family, your friends. They can make an impact at work and at home and different other places as well. For all of these virtues put on the mind, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace be. Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you will call to peace and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your heart to God. Whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. I'm so simple. This is what God would have us to do. How do we do this? We do as God does to us. As God so forgave, we do forgive. As God so loved us, just as we are, we do love. This is they all. This is each other. This is something that's hurting so many today. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Why? Because he loved. Because he cared. 
And when did he die for us? According to the word of God, he died for us when while we were yet still sinners. While we were still deep in sin, while we still had that old self on us, he died for us. God loved us when we even had that old self, but now we have the new self. Now, who are we? Well, look at verses 1 through 3. Since you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above and not on earthly things. For you died and your life now is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is it who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death things of the world. Here as he says, are you dressed for the day? Spiritually dressed, and not just on a Sunday, but are you really spiritually dressed for the things come Monday through Saturday? You, have you put off those old selves? Are you asking God, through Christ Jesus, Lord, help me with the old way of which I used to live. Help me to strive to be like you. Help me to, to, to put to death these things, the anger, malice, the many other things he talks about here, the sexual immorality, the lust, the greed, the slander, the filthy language. Help me, Lord, to deal as I deal with these things. Help me to wear. I do not put them on, but help me to put the things that you would have me put on. Help me, Lord, and help me to dress for today. Are you truly asking God every day? help you to dress appropriately, spiritually, to bring glory and honor to Him each and every day. Do you know, truly know, in your heart, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord, as your Savior? Let us be. Almighty God, as we have so heard from your word and what you have declared, Lord, if anyone here today whom you have spoken to, the same unto them, come, and I will help you with all things that are taking place in your life. Lord, I pray they will come unto you. Be with us at this time. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Turn to hymn number 144. As we sing all four standards and our closing hymn and also invitation hymn, when I survey if Christ is speaking to you today, you come. Thank <laughs> you.
I've had a talk over weeks and so forth, and Clarence has been here a long time with us. We, we always consider Clarence a member of Bayou Baptist Church and also a good friend and all. And he comes and he says, hey, make it official to be a member of Bayou Baptist Church. So I've got to put him on the spot as well. Everybody else has been put on the spot. I've been put on the spot. Even when I came here, I joined, I had people, I came off. So we all do. I'm going to put him on the spot, but he, he comes as well as much to be officially a member of Bayou Baptist Church, and we can thank him by statement. Uh, uh, his church that he was at before, I guess, was gone, or it's no longer there, it's with, with everything else, and so he, he comes, and so we, we're going to take him by statement, uh, by profession of faith, like I said, no Clarence. Are you having a question? Has it been that long? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize it was that long. But anyhow, so he comes, and so we, I just want to make it public, it's forward with everything, and let everybody know that Clarence comes today, and it's forward with everything, and if not, I know you have been praying for him, and we do this with everybody who comes here, so we don't want to make him feel like any less different than anybody else as well. Um, after we you just come around and give him right in a fellowship as well, and just, even though you've already done it, welcome him. We still want to do it again. I want to make him feel just like a part of the family, like he always has been and always will be as well. So you come around and give him the right hand of fellowship. Again, do remember the many things that are going on uh, this coming week, this Wednesday, uh, Bible study in the back. This coming Sunday, of course, uh, next Sunday will be our banquet. We're all invited for that, uh, as for is coming for that. So keep, keep that in uh, remembrance of all things that are going on. You have a blessed day and a good day to the Lord as well. And I'll lead us in the closing prayer. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you that we are able to come together. We are able to worship together. Come before you in prayer. Thank you, Thank you, Lord, for this freedom that we have. And we pray, Father, that we know that we know, Father, through you, we've adhered to freedom that was beyond our own reach. We thank you for Clarence, Father, and for him wanting to be a part this church and <coughs> Father I keep emphasizing and I want to emphasize that this building is not the church it's these people in here that make up this church it's these people that are the family it is your children Father we are your children and I pray that each and every one look to you for leadership and guidance be with us as we go our separate ways bring us back to worship to fellowship to sing and to pray together again. In thy son's precious name we pray. Amen. I pray that if God has spoken to you today, whether here or you looking at this on Facebook or YouTube, and if you need further counseling or if you would like to talk to someone and you live locally here, you can call at the church at 985 214-9343. And feel free to call if you're out of town or if you don't live near here. Seek your local pastor or minister and talk to them further about your own eternal life. We only have today. So if you would like to seek or to talk to someone, feel free to call us and let us know if we can help you in your eternal life your salvation, your relationship with the Lord as well.